All right, in segment one, we talked about uh, kind of the background in hormone therapy and the different types of estrogen. What we're going to talk about here in segment two is going to talk about what are some of the signs and symptoms when ladies start to go through the change or through menopause. Well, you know what? It's interesting. If, if you and I look at what's the first sign that somebody may be going through the change is going to be a change in their periods. So their cycles may start to become a little closer together. Their periods maybe start to come a little bit longer. They may start to have heavy bleeding or skipping periods. So it's some sort of irregular bleeding is one of the first things. But you know, the other, the other symptoms that uh, you can have is certainly you can have hot flashes, you can have night sweats, mood swings, headaches, loss of balance, dizziness, short-term memory, trouble concentrating, trouble focusing, vaginal dryness, uh, some problems with leaking of urine. There's a whole bunch of what we call quality of life symptoms that you can start to have when your estrogen is low. So if you and I go in and, and talk to ladies uh, or in your particular situation, what, why are you going to take hormone therapy? What's the main reason you're coming to see me about taking hormone therapy? It has to do with your quality of life. You'd like to get rid of those symptoms that you have. And that's exactly what we do when we treat you with hormone therapy is that we start you on a natural plant-based transdermal type of estrogen that's going to get rid of your symptoms. Now, what I usually do for my patients is that and if you came to see me, I would find out what symptom is it that's really bothering you the most. If it's headaches or if it's hot flashes or you're waking up at nighttime and trouble sleeping, whichever it is for you, then that's the symptom we're going to try to get rid of. So we're going to start you on a low-dose hormone therapy and we're going to increase that dose till we get rid of those symptoms. So our goal is to get rid of your symptoms. Now you may ask, well, wait a minute, aren't you going to follow estrogen levels? You're going to check levels? Well, you know, no, I don't. I don't really do that because it's like $185 uh, for an estradiol test. And, and really, if your symptoms are gone, why do I need a blood test to show me that that we're... The key thing is, is that I go based clinically. If you're doing fine, then we're on the right dose. If we've given you the, a dose of hormone therapy and you're still having some symptoms, we've got to up that dose a little further. So we're going to up the dose until we get rid of your symptoms. Now, the thing is is that one of the questions is, well, how long am I going to have to take this hormone therapy? Well, that's a very good question. And the key thing is, is that when you take it for quality of life issues and you choose to start on it when you go through the change of whatever the age that is for you, as long as you continue to take it, you're not going to have the quality of life problems. So in other words, if you start at 43 or 44 on your hormone therapy and you get to 60 and you go, you know what, I don't think I'm going to take this anymore. Guess what? you're going to start to have some quality of life issues are going to begin at 60. Which is interesting, you know, because they just did a study recently, it came out this last October, and it was a fascinating study. They took ladies showing up to clinics with moderate to severe hot flashes, and that's a pretty simple thing to kind of uh, to uh, keep track of. So they divided them based on three groups, women that were between 35 and 40, women that were between 40 and 45, and women between 45 and 50. And they followed these ladies for 14 years without treating them, which is a pretty gutsy thing to do. So we traditionally have, when we've treated ladies, is that if you came to me a couple of years ago, I would have said, well, if you don't choose to take hormone therapy, how long are you going to have these signs and symptoms and your uh, kind of a negative quality of life? Probably for a couple of years, and then they gradually kind of go away. Well, interesting thing in this study they found out that if you showed up between 35 and 40 with moderate to severe hot flashes and you didn't do anything for 14 years, these ladies went an average of 11.7 years with symptoms before they stopped. If you showed up between 40 and 45, you went like 10.2 years. And if you were between 45 and 50, you went 5.7 years. So the take-home thing from that is that these quality of life symptoms are going to go on for a long period of time. So you're going to suffer for a long time before those are going to stop. Now, the question you may have, well, wait a second. Let's say I take hormone therapy and I start at 43 or 40, whenever you start to go through the change. As long as you continue to take the hormone therapy, you're not going to have those symptoms. But if you get to 60 and say, you know what, I'm done. I'm not going to take these anymore. How long are you going to have symptoms then? We don't know. But after this study that just came out, I'm inclined to think that it could be a significant period of time. 
So the, the take home thing from this and what's really important to remember is that if you start on hormone therapy right when you go through the change, not only is your quality of life going to be better, but it's going to have an effect on some long-term things, which I would like to talk to you about. So we're going to talk about some long-term planning that I think is really important for you to understand also. All right, looking at long-term planning for your hormone therapy, I look at what's the main reasons you're going to choose to take hormone therapy. Well, obviously, we've established that quality of life is probably the main reason you're going to choose to take hormone therapy. But what I'd like to do is talk about some long-term things that I think you may want to consider when you're taking hormone therapy. I look at you and I say, okay, after the menopause, what's the number one reason ladies die in the United States? It's heart attacks and strokes. Heart attacks and strokes are going to take 550,000 ladies are going to die from heart attacks and strokes. So I look at that and I say, okay, is your taking a natural plant-based bioidentical estrogen going to have any positive or negative effect in relation to heart attacks and strokes? Well, the interesting thing is it has a positive effect if you start on your hormone therapy right when you go through the change. So, Remember we talked about how your quality of life is going to improve right when you start taking hormone therapy, but so is your prevention for heart attacks and strokes. Well, how does that happen? Well, what happens is that your coronary arteries on the outside of your heart start to put plaque down at an accelerated rate when you go through the change and you choose not to take hormone therapy. So not taking estrogen puts increasing plaque down on your coronary arteries. Now, obviously, how much plaque you put down depends on multiple factors, your family history. If you have a strong family history of heart disease, if you're uh, obese, if you're a smoker, if you take alcohol, if you have a high-fat diet, obviously if you're doing all those things, you're going to be putting some significant plaque down. But all things being equal, you're taking estrogen is going to decrease your risk for putting plaque down on your coronary arteries. So, as long as you continue to take your hormone therapy, you're not going to be putting the plaque down. So, you go, well, how long do I have to take hormone therapy? Well, <laughs> how long do you want to prevent the plaque on the walls of your coronary arteries? I would assume long term. So, that's what we're finding out today in studies is that when ladies lose their estrogen, no matter what age they are, whether you're a 20-year-old, a 30-year-old, or somebody that's 50 or 60, it's not a good thing. There was a study done where they looked at young ladies who their birth dates put them between age 25 and 35, roughly, that had a discharge diagnosis from the hospital for heart attack. Well, obviously, it's unusual for 20 to 30-year-olds to, to have heart attacks. So what they did is they looked at these young ladies, they went back and looked at their records, and they said they must have some sort of genetic thing. Well, when they looked at their genetics, there was no family history of uh, some sort of unusual early heart disease. But what they found out when they looked at their past medical history, these young ladies had significant periods of time where they had no estrogen. They were not on birth control pills, they were not pregnant, they weren't taking any types of hormone therapy. So what happens is that when ladies lose their estrogen, whether they're 20 or 30, you start putting plaque down. When you put plaque down, your risk for heart attacks and strokes goes up. So now I look at the next thing and I say, okay, what's the number two reason ladies die in the United States? I didn't put that in here. It's going to be accidents. It's going to take about 200,000 ladies. Colon, or, uh, lung cancer is going to take about 165,000 ladies. Now, hip fracture is going to take about 80,000 ladies. Now, I look at that and I say, well, you know, that's a preventable disease. Because if you look at your bone density, if we take you right now and you're just getting close to the menopause and we check your bone density, your bone density measures how thick your bones are. And so before you go through the change, if you're making estrogen, you're going to have nice thick bones. As long as you continue to take your estrogen, you're going to continue to keep that thickness. Now you go, why does that? How, what makes my bones stay thick? Your estrogen helps your intestinal tract to absorb more calcium, and it helps your kidneys to keep from excreting it. So your body, when it's making estrogen or when you're taking it, is helping you to try to hang on to all your calcium. So as long as you continue to take your hormone therapy, your bones are going to continue to stay strong. But once again, just like your heart, if you stop taking your estrogen, and here's the bone thickness, you're going to lose the majority of your bone mass over the first three to five years. So if you wait five or six years and go, oh, I think I'm going to take my estrogen now, 
you've missed the boat. Your bones are way down here. It's much harder to rebuild bone than it is to keep from losing it in the first place. And you know what? The bone you rebuild is never as good as the original bone you had. So it's much better to prevent that. So 80,000 ladies die from hip fractures. But you know what the rest of the story is on that? Is that, you know, when somebody gets a hip fracture, 20% are going to die in the first two weeks. And that's because of a fat embolus from those large bones have fat in them, in your hip and your femur. And they release that fat that causes an embolus and that's how people die. So 20% are going to die within the first two weeks. 50% of ladies are going to be handicapped for the rest of their life. 30% are going to get back to normal. So there's a huge impact on women's lives when they have hip fractures. Nothing good comes from having a hip fracture. So there's 80,000 potential lives that we can make a tremendous impact on decreasing if they choose to take hormone therapy. Colon cancer affects about 55,000 ladies after uh, menopause. And you go, well, how does estrogen affect colon cancer? Well, interestingly enough, estrogen decreases your risk for colon cancer by 45%. And you go, well, how is that possible? Well, estrogen lowers your fasting insulin levels. And having low fasting insulin levels is a good thing. That decreases your chance for diabetes, decreases your chance for colon cancer, decreases your chance for breast cancer, so it has a very positive effect. So who has high fasting insulin levels? Well, obese people, diabetic people. So you can see why obese people and diabetic people have a higher risk for colon cancer, for breast cancer, and for diabetes because they've got the high fasting insulin levels. So that's another big benefit from taking hormone therapy. Now I can see the wheels turning there in your mind and you're thinking, well wait a second, where where's this breast cancer come into this whole thing? Well you know how many ladies died last year from breast cancer in the United States was 39,000. So I want to put that into perspective. We're losing 550,000 ladies a year from heart attacks and strokes. We're losing 39,000 ladies every year from breast cancer. Now the number of ladies getting breast cancer every year this past year was about 220 to 225,000. So we have a large number of ladies getting breast cancer, but the number of ladies dying from breast cancer hasn't changed. I looked at the data from 1986. The number of ladies dying from breast cancer in 1986 was 39,000. The number of ladies that got breast cancer in 1986 was 120,000. So obviously populations increased and more ladies are getting screened. But the take home thing is we're doing an awesome job in ladies who get breast cancer in getting their disease down to where very few actually die from their breast cancer. So long term survival rates are, are amazing in breast cancer. So most ladies that get breast cancer are not going to die from their disease. They're going to die from one of these other things. So now I can see that you're, <laughs> the wheels are turning there and you're going, wait a second, I thought estrogen caused breast cancer. And that's an interesting thing. It does not plant that seed of breast cancer. Estrogen may be the water that causes that seed to grow, but it doesn't plant that seed. Now, that's an important thing to think about because when ladies get breast cancer, so if somebody gets breast cancer today, that breast cancer has been sitting there for eight years before we were able to detect it. Even with all of our imaging, we're getting better. It used to be 10 years. Now it's down to about eight years. So what happens is that if you look at ladies, if you're taking hormone therapy and you happen to get breast cancer, guess what? If you're estrogen, if you have estrogen receptor positive tumor, and we'll come back to that in a minute, and your estrogen you're taking happens to cause that breast cancer to go, isn't to grow, isn't that a bad thing? Well, yes and no. How's that for kind of an evasive answer? What happens is, is that if you're taking estrogen and it happens to cause your breast cancer to grow, you're gonna get you're gonna feel it sooner, you're gonna image it sooner, so you're gonna get picked up sooner. That's why ladies that are on hormone replacement therapy that happen to get breast cancer have an earlier stage disease less chance of lymph nodes being positive, and a longer survival rate. The other thing is, is that they have a more well-differentiated tumor. Well, what does that mean? If you could look over my shoulder and look at a microscope on breast cancer, you look at this normal breast tissue, and in the middle you see this cancer sitting there. Well, all the cells, they're abnormal, but they're all organized. That's what we call well-differentiated. Women who have estrogen have a high proportion of well-differentiated tumors. 
they respond very well to chemotherapy. They respond very well, and those ladies have a, a, a very good survival rate. If you take ladies who are not taking estrogen, and they get a breast cancer that is, has estrogen receptor negative, and you look at theirs, they have normal breast tissue, and they have this cancer, and it just looks bizarre. The cells are growing all different shapes and sizes growing fast. That's a poorly differentiated tumor. Those metastasize early, they spread quickly, There's, those have bad outcomes. So ladies that are not on hormone therapy that get breast cancer usually have a worse prognosis. So when I take a look at it and I say, okay, what are you, I look at you and I say, okay, what are your risk factors for breast cancer? Well, obviously family history is something we need to take a look at. If you have a family history of breast cancer, then certainly uh, that needs to, you need to follow up with your physician because there is some genetic testing that can be done and certainly that a little questionnaire every one of my patients that I see fills out a, a questionnaire for a history of cancer including breast cancer and so if somebody has high risk for breast cancer then we test them for that so if you look and you say okay I don't have a family history of breast cancer the next thing I look at is obesity women that are obese have an increased risk for breast cancer next thing I look at has to do with alcohol. People that are alcoholics that are, drink hard liquor every day, much higher risk for uh, breast cancer. I look at smoking. Smokers have a much higher risk for breast cancer. Final thing is environmental toxins, and we don't really have a problem with environmental toxins. They've changed pesticides and things like that. So in the big scheme of things, if you don't have any of those risk factors, you're taking a natural plant-based bioidentical 17 beta estradiol is not going to increase your risk for the breast cancer. Now, I think it's very important that you make sure you're getting your mammograms, you need to follow up with your, your uh, gynecologist, your primary care physician, and that needs to be watched very closely. But I think when you look in the big scheme of things, and I look at this and I go, now, if you don't have any of those risk factors we talked about, and you look at the benefits that you're having, your quality of life issues are going to be better, your decreased risk for heart attacks and strokes, for hip fractures, for colon cancer, all of those things have a huge impact on your life. So I would like for you to kind of take this into perspective when you're thinking about taking hormone replacement therapy.